<clears throat> Hello and welcome back to Python Quick Tips. I'm going to restart this. And what we're following on this tutorial is the OpenCV uh, thresholding methods. You can go to this. I'll, I'll leave it in the video description below. And what this will allow us to do is adjust the threshold on either RGB or just binary images. Um, you can find this document as well by going to Google and typing in image threshold CV2, doing a quick search. And the first thing that pops up should be the image thresholding documentation for OpenCV. So let's run the code re really quickly. Um, import CV2 import numpy as np and import matplotlib run that next we're going to read this image um, let me pull up where i have these images on my desktop which is right here so um, this is the image we're going to be looking at it's an SEM image of some metal particles. And essentially, we're just going to be importing this image into OpenCV. So uh, that's what this line of code is doing. It's calling that specific image. And then we are cropping the image. The reason we are cropping the image is because for these thresholding methods, every pixel matters. So we're going to crop out this white description of the SEM parameters below. So we're trimming it from 0 to 690 in the Y direction. Typically, this is not always the case, but typically 0, 0 on an image is right here. Uh, so 690 is going down. Um, and then 690, it cuts off there. <clears throat> not always the case, but in this case it is. So then we can uh, do that. And this line of code shows the image, and CV2 is a, a finicky program because when we run this line of code, if you do not include this line of code here, CV2.WaitKey0, it will crash uh, the program, and you'll just basically have to restart your code. It's not that big of a deal. Um, so here's the image, and you can see that this is still running here. Uh, because of the asterisk that's indicating it's still running. So when we close out of it, it'll finish running that. So now we can run a quick histogram of it. Of all of the pixels within it, uh, the pixels range from values of zero, which is um, either white or black. Um, this. 255 is white, zero is black. So there are no completely black pixels, but there are a few maybe that are completely white. Um, and this is the distribution of that. That's what the histogram means. Um, the number of bins here indicate how many bins there are, uh, 100 categories. And we can see the most here, um, and then kind of a dip down. Uh, so these two distributions are most likely the distributions of the background here in the distribution of the particles here. So we can utilize that information to adjust the threshold. Um, right here at around 95, right where that dip is, is probably where we want to cut it off for a simple binary threshold. And bam, now we have all pixels of values of either all white or all black, um, zero, which is black, or 255, which is white. So that that is uh, that. Now there are other thresholds we can run. Um, I set these to 90 for some reason. It could be 90, 95, it's fine. Uh, binary again, binary inverse, which is the inverse of binary. So it'll just make it either white or black. Truncation to zero or two zero inverse. And then the Atsu method as well. And Atsu is just a method of determining the best uh, part to. So let me run that and run that and ret 132. So the Atsu method says that 132 is the best uh, pixel amount to, to 
have an image cutoff. So everything below 95 when I did this one is goes to zero and everything above 95 goes to 255. That's binary, it's either zero or one. And yeah, uh, for this one it determines it and determines it to be 132. So we can run that. And now when we run this line of code, a bunch of images are gonna pop up. So let me just take this time to quickly show this. If you're following along with this, you can see some good examples of what binary does, what binary inverse does, original image truncation, and, and some of these will work for different scenarios. I, that's why I'm showing them all in this t tutorial. So let's uh, go ahead and look at them all for our image. So there's two zero inverse, there's two zero. That looks uh, pretty good actually. Um, truncation, just grade the whole thing out. Inverse binary, so black particles with a white background, white particles with a black background, and the Atsu method, which doesn't work that well for these SEM images of metal particles like this. So now let's talk about the medium blur method, which could come in handy as well. Um, 5, 15, 25, 35, uh, if we run that and then look at these different blurs, here's 35, here's 25, 15, 5, so it's getting a little more clear, not that much of a blur, and then initial. Now, the 5 here in this code indicates the box that it selects, so it's kind of just cycling through a box. Like if we did one that was really big, it'll be very blurry if we did like 105. And then let's change that to 105. Let's see what that looks like. Run it and run it. 105 is just a mess because it's taking a 105 by 105 pixel block to blur it. It's taking up too much data at one time, so that's no good. Um, we can also do a Gaussian blur. And here again, we have the box 5 by 5, 15 by 15, 25 by 25. Uh, pretty blurry, getting clear, getting clear. And then finally, the initial image. So, why would you want to do a blur? Sometimes it can help you to uh, perform the next step, which we're not going to be going over in this video, but the next step would be image segmentation, or there's different tools you can use to extract the data available from these particles and take measurements of uh, diameter, area, intensity, all of these different measurements. But first, before you do that, you have to clean the image up. So these are just different techniques. You, you might be looking at a different microscope image with different challenges. So that's why I'm, I'm showing all of these methods. Um, so now we can go here to do a binary threshold followed by a Gaussian blur followed by another Gaussian blur and the binary threshold uh, with a medium blur of a 5 by 5 block and a 15 block. And let's just look at what all of those look like. So here's the, let's look at the initial one. So here's our binary uh, threshold segmented there. Now we can blur it to kind of get rid of these dots here. You blur it once, they start to fade a little bit. Blur it again, and they're fading even more. Maybe we could erase those out by using these blurs. Uh, the medium blur did a pretty good job of it. So this is a medium blur uh, five by five, and this is the medium blur 15. There's also something called adaptive thresholding, so it will kind of cycle through the entire image to determine it. Um, this 25 indicates how big the block is again, so by adjusting that to five, we shouldn't have that much of a, a difference here. And it's looking at just whatever's in that five by five block. So if we increase that, You get some really interesting images here. And the more you increase that, the more it will do that. 35. Let's go, let's go all the way to 95. 
And yeah, so that could also be a good way to keep the boundaries cut off so that we can draw boundaries around these later. But um, these are just the typical thresholding methods that we can use. Um, all of the documentation is right here. Um, another quick tip I can give you is that when you go click on adaptive mean, because it looked like it worked really well, but it, it didn't work that good when I implemented it, um, you, then you would need to look at the documentation. So you can go here. You can see also adaptive threshold. And what you want to see in this is the input parameter. So this function documentation here, this is exactly what it's calling for. So you can kind of figure out what it's doing by what it's asking for. So first is the input array, the source. Second is the output array. If you leave that blank, it will just make it the same as the input array. It's not going to adjust the size of the image that you use. Your max value, your adaptive method. You can come down here and look at adaptive method. What does it want? Okay, it wants this. Uh, threshold type, it needs to be either binary or inverse binary. And then block size is the size of the pixel neighborhood that is used to calculate the threshold value. So it's basically adjusting that threshold value where we picked 95 before for every portion of it. For this one, it's adjusting that based on the, the neighborhood of that block. So it's constantly adjusting that adaptive um, threshold uh, value based on the block size. So there we go. Yeah. So on the edges, it's very clear. Yeah, very interesting. OK. So uh, that is adaptive thresholding and CV2 thresholding methods uh, using Python. Thank you for watching.